Toilet removal doesn't have to be messy. Turn the shutoff valve off and then pour liquid lock into the bowl. This will solidify the water. You just need to wait a few minutes. Then you can remove the closet flange bolts. And if they don't remove, you can then cut them off below the nut. Then you remove the water supply line. And as you can see, there's no mess. Removing vinyl flooring can be easy. Score the baseboard between the drywall in case there's a sealant there. And then pull up between the tack strip and the carpet to get access between the plywood and the vinyl that it's sitting on. Then you can use a long pry bar, in this case a 36 inch pry bar, to pull up both the vinyl and the plywood at the same time. This circular saw equipped with a diamond blade and set to a quarter inch thickness that matches the depth of the tile and the hardy backer allows you to cut through the grout joints and make these pieces of tile into three by three sections that are easily removable using a long pry bar and a hammer. It's much faster to remove your tile this way than by using a hammer and a chisel. So strongly consider doing this but wear a dust respirator at the same time. This is one of the best methods for installing penny tiles. Dampen your wood soap floor, apply modified thin set using directional troweling, and add dura rock or any other type of cement board to that. You need to use alkali resistant screws for cement board, and after each subsequent board, you need to waterproof between them using alkali resistant mesh tape and modified thin set. Just make sure it's a thin layer. And then you can add a sealant up against the tub along with a banding, and you can use that same sealant around your toilet flange. The next step after your cement board has cured is to apply a liquid waterproofing membrane over top of everything. You need to apply two coats and you should also apply it along the baseboard or where the baseboard is going to go over top of your drywall so that if there's a leak in the bathroom the water won't wick into the drywall. Then what you need to do is match the thickness of the penny tile to your trowel, apply modified thin set over top of your liquid membrane, and set the tiles. This is just one method for installing the penny tile and getting professional results. A second method is to dampen the wood subfloor and then use a quarter inch by quarter inch square notch trowel to apply modified thin set over top of it and then bond your dura rock to that. You need to leave a gap at any change of plane like at your walls and then again use your alkali resistant screws every six inches. Now in this case we're using speed set to speed up this installation so we're applying that to all the seams adding our alkali resistant mesh to that and then you can use something like curdy band up against your shower and your drywall to make sure that all these changes of plane are in fact waterproof and by using speed set you're able to do this in one single day that'll allow you to waterproof as well with something like hydroband and you can waterproof over top of the cement board the curb and over top of any of the seams the only gist is you need to use a wet film gauge and make sure that you have the proper thickness of the hydroband after each subsequent coat so if you want professional results make sure you follow those tips setting tiles up against the bathtub can be tough especially if the tub bows out so you you can scribe the tiles with a pencil and cut that scribe mark to get the tiles nice and flush with the bathtub. And what this will allow you to do is to get nice even grout joints as well as you move away from the bathtub area. So hopefully that tip helps you out. By the way, if you are liking these clever bathroom renovation tips, please give this video a thumbs up. That way other people will be able to find it and hopefully it'll help them with their project. Recess ceiling lights can be easy to install. You just want to make sure you don't do it right over the framing. You can cut a hole out in your ceiling. You can use a hole saw you can use a manual keyhole saw or a dremel to do that and just pull your wires out and what we like about this system is they're just push to connect so you push in your hot and your neutrals into this light and then you just plug your light into the socket and that's pretty much it that's how you install one of these parmita recessed lights and they're definitely very simple to install a toilet closet flange doesn't have to be difficult to install. In this case, we're just cutting down our pipe coming up out of the floor. We're dry fitting the flange, making sure it fits our rough end, and marking the holes in it, and cutting through the porcelain tile using a diamond bit. Then you need to prime and add the cement for both the closet flange and the pipe to make sure it's nice and glued in tight. It should be sitting on your finished floor, and then you can use tap cons to secure it to your tile. And then in this case, we're using a foam gasket instead of a wax one. So those are some tips for installing a toilet. Unfortunately, some toilets run and one of the biggest solutions is to replace the fill valves. You need to flush the toilet after shutting it off with the shut off, drain the tank, undo the supply line, and then undo the nut that's holding the old fill valve in place. Then just pull the fill valve from the toilet tank. Make sure the rubber gasket for the new fill valve is sitting flush with the toilet tank. You'll need to measure from the top of the fill valve to your overflow pipe and make sure that the fill valve is extended per the instructions. Then you just put the hose onto 
into the little port that fits onto the overflow pipe and then secure the fill valve with a nut to the bottom of the tank and then add your water supply line and turn it back on and that's it. That's how it's easy to replace your fill valve and prevent a running toilet and you can adjust the water height to be about a half inch to three quarters of an inch below that fill valve by just twisting the little knob on this particular model. Frequently the water supply lines for toilets do leak so you need to turn the water off at the shutoff valve, turn the nut on the supply line clockwise, drain it, and then counterclockwise for the nut on the shutoff valve. This is a new steel braided water supply line. It's a click seal by Fluid Master. It fits 3 8 inch fittings and 7 8 inch fittings and what's nice about it is you tighten it down over top of your shutoff and then you just hand tighten this until you hear the click and you're done. And then you turn the water back on and that's how easy it is to replace your supply line. This will take all the mystery out of vanity installation. You need to make sure your vanity is level and then you can dab the hot and cold water supplies with paint. Push your vanity up against that paint and it'll mark the location of the supplies perfectly on the back. Pilot drill through that from the back and then use a core bit that has a pilot bit in it to drill through the front. This will prevent any splintering and give you a nice professional look. Then you can dry fit the vanity and make sure it fits and then mark the pipe coming out of the wall for the P-trap and do the exact same thing. This will all give you a nice hole on the back that you can then match up with your hole saw. Again, we're going to pilot hole through the back and then use the pilot bit with our two and a quarter inch hole saw through the front so that we don't splinter the vanity. Then you can put your vanity in place, make sure it's level again, and then you want to find your studs in the wall with a good stud finder. This is the Franklin stud finder. It's never let us down and you can use two of the long screws that come with the vanity to secure it to the wall. The next step was to apply a thick bead of 100% silicone on the top perimeter of the base cabinet. Then install the sink and clean off any of the excess silicone. And we use the laser level to make sure that our glass mosaics would remain level around that vanity top. We mixed up Artex X77. This is a thin set that we use for mosaics. It's great when mixed to the right consistency. We cut down our Schluter Quadec and used a 3 square notch trowel to apply the thin set to the wall. Added the Quadec, made sure it was bonded to the thin set, and used this really awesome diamond blade to cut through our glass mosaic and give us a square cut up against the quadic. We then compress that using our grout float and put a spacer between the bottom of the mosaics and the vanity top for expansion and contraction. You always want to clean the top and the wall as you go. If you follow these tips, you're going to get a really great vanity top that looks awesome and professional in the end. This primer was used over top of a wood subfloor so that our self leveler would stick to it. Oftentimes the area right where the tub goes is not level so you can add a self leveler then you can add a stringer if your instructions call for that you just need to make sure the stringer is nice and level and in this case we added mortar over top of our tub area and set our tub in that and made sure it was level on all four sides always make sure that you secure a steel tub or cast iron tub to your studs so that it looks awesome in the end a urinot trial was used to apply modified thin set to these weedy building panels along the short side of the tile then we cut down the first row of tile so that it would match our shower niche area more on that in a second. Then we back buttered these tiles, set them in place, and centered them on this wall. You always want to pull your tiles and make sure you have adequate thin set coverage, and you want an expansion and contraction joint between the first row of tile and the tub. Now in this case, we used our manual tile cutter for most of the cuts, but we also used a diamond blade and angle grinder to make some of the scribe cuts you see to make sure that the tiles fit perfectly with the sides. Again, you can also use a tile leveling system like T-Lock to help with these tiles and make sure that they're nice and level and even with each other so that when you set them on the wall you're going to get professional looks and you're going to eliminate tile lippage which is when adjacent tiles look uneven in relation to each other. You can level the tiles with your laser level as you go up the wall and we highly recommend if you're a beginner to do that so that you can get professional results. The first step to installing this custom shower niche was to add the top plate and the bottom plate. Make sure the bottom plate was level and mark the location of the studs based on that and then cut out the studs using an oscillating tool and then nail that in place using our nail gun. Now you can also pitch the bottom if you want, but in this case we made sure it was level. We also applied weedy joint sealant to the tub lip so that our cutout in our weedy building panel would fit over top of that and it would be fully waterproof. Then we cut out the area where we wanted our shower niche to be by using just a simple utility knife and that's what makes weedy awesome. Then we applied weedy joint sealant to the drywall, added that cutout piece, and applied weedy joint sealant along the perimeter of the sill, screwed that in place, and along the perimeter of the side and top 
inside the shower niche. This waterproofs the entire custom shower niche so that you then have a really great surface to tile over top of. So hopefully these tips help you build a custom shower niche that looks amazing. And if the tips in this video helped you out, smash that like button so that somebody else can find it and it'll help them out as well. And also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more helpful tutorials just like this one.